Hello and welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. My name is Michael. I am your producer and host. And today I'm really excited to bring to you an interview that I did with Lisa Bobiak, the founder of Living Fully Balanced. So Lisa has been helping professional women for over 10 years understand burnout and heal from it and get back to pursuing their passions and being the energetic individuals that they truly are. I'm going to keep the intro brief here. We do talk about Lisa's story, which is extremely powerful. And just one thing that I want to say as a coach myself, talking to other coaches who have been through what it is they help people with, those are the coaches who you're going to see the best effects working with. Lisa has a lot of insight and provides a lot of value in this episode. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsor, which is Inspire Life Chiropractic Center, where we stand for your health being inspired by choice. Inspire Life Chiropractic Center and the Inspire Co. family is growing. We do have a new office manager here at Inspire Life. Her name is Ashley. She is wonderful. And we're making a lot of changes to best serve you, our listeners, as well as our practice members and essentially the entire community. So you can hop on over to our website, inspirelifechirocenter.com, check out our new upgrades, check out our new people and our new offerings. And like I said, we stand for health inspired by choice. That's who we are. It's what we are and what we've always been. And that's what I got. So I know I said this was going to be a short intro. I'm rambling now. Let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Inspire Life Podcast. My name is Michael. I am your producer and host. And today I'm really excited to have an awesome guest, Lisa Bobiak, on the show. And she is the founder of Living Fully Balanced. And she's been challenging the current hustle culture and preventing burnout for nearly a decade. And because her life once ran on autopilot, Lisa has experienced burnout several times and has faced the life altering challenges that are a result of that burnout. So her mission as a life balance and leadership coach is preventing burnout and teaching life balance strategies to high achieving women. And through her living fully balanced process, she shows women with full lives how they can regain their energy and increase their capacity so that they can make their mark on the world without losing themselves in the process. Lisa is the creator of the Beyond Burnout Kickstart, the Living Fully Balanced Life Planner, and the semi-annual pause retreats, which we're going to be talking about because you have one coming up very soon, correct? Yes, I do. Awesome. Well, Lisa, I'll let you take it away if you want to share anything else about yourself and we'll get started. Excellent. Well, it's nice to be here, Michael. Thank you so much for inviting me and especially congratulations to you, your business and inspire life. You're growing and serving more people. So um, I watch you grow and it's exciting to see. So uh, thanks for having me on. I was so excited to talk about burnout and yet it's a double-edged sword. I'm kind of burnout about talking about burnout, meaning everybody's talking about burnout. Yeah. You know, it's, it's its own hashtag now. And what I'm noticing is that there's a missing piece in the conversation. We're talking about burnout, and yet I don't believe our culture has learned how to solve or prevent burnout. We're just in a chronic hustle burnout stage. And so um, I'm excited to talk about how how we can take personal responsibility, even though we're in this crazy hustle culture. It's a go, go, do, do culture. We're pushed to do more. We're rewarded for our success. You know, we're not rewarded when we rest or take breaks. And yet we're not treating burnout in the symptoms. Yeah, that's I mean, you make such a good point. And Just me as a millennial, there's almost this, like, I mean, you just mentioned burnout and I see so many of my friends who are working hard. So like just trying to do their hustles and their side hustles and all these things. And there's almost like this badge of honor for especially millennials. And I think everyone, when it comes to like, well, I worked, you know, 70 hours this week and I worked, well, I worked 80 hours this week. Right. And people are taking pride in the fact that they are working so hard, running themselves into the ground. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's even people who are like, man, oh, like I only slept three hours last night because I was working so hard and it's problematic is what you're saying. And, and we know it's problematic yet. There's this massive kind of idea and kind of group idea that we must be working harder and more. So I'm happy to have you here to talk about maybe some of the detriments of burnout, how we can maybe address it. And then to sharing, you know, with our listeners, how they can work with you to, if they're really ready to address this as they know that burnout has kind of taken hold to hopefully reverse that process. Because I do know too, just from people I've talked to, once burnout kind of takes hold, it can be 
a challenge to come out of that. So could you share maybe a little bit about maybe how you work with people or who you work with and you know, what are the, what are, I guess, maybe we'll start with what are the telltale signs that you are experiencing burnout? Sure. That's sure. A good place to start. I think. <laughs> so I think it's a great place to start it. And I also want to address what you said when you're in burnout, it it's so hard to get out of it. We are overwhelmed one piece of burnout, we are exhausted, two pieces of burnout, and then we lack personal efficacy, meaning we've lost our confidence, we don't feel we can do anything about our situation. So those are the three components that need to be present for burnout. So it's burnout is lost energy, burnout is lost enthusiasm, and burnout is lost confidence. So people in burnout, number one, rarely notice it because it happens over time. It's not like one busy event caused them to burn out and they can identify it, adjust and go forward. It's not that it's we burn out in the small, almost they're they're incremental yeses. We say yes to things, very little things, but over time it adds up to complete exhaustion and overwhelm. And in our culture of this strive and drive, right? Zero to 60, I'm a badass and a rock star and I can do it all and I only need three hours of sleep. That's rewarded. So you're right. It's a total badge of honor. And I believe it shouldn't be because when we're in burnout, we're not able to produce well at work. We're not able to give well in our relationships. And so what I find with the clients I work with, they are high achieving women who set the bar and then they reach that bar and they set the bar higher. You know, they are the women. And and by the way, burnout isn't only a woman's issue. It's across the board and interesting it's certainly talked about in the workplace and in certain industries, like, like you and I talked a little bit about before we went live, healthcare industries, mental health industries, social work, those medical, we know those people burn out, but it's interesting to note that we can burn out even if we're not in a fast paced job. My burnout story is I think unique in that I burn out a few times and I was, quote, just a stay at home mom. And so when I chose to stay at home with my girls early on, I let me backtrack. I never expected to be a stay at home mom. When I grew up, I knew I was going to be a teacher and then a principal and I would have children somewhere along the way. There was just no doubt in my mind. So I was teaching. I absolutely loved being in the classroom. I was pregnant. I had my baby in the spring. I anticipated to return in the fall. No big deal. Turns out it comes fall. My principal calls. Hey, we held your position. Are you up for coming back? And I couldn't make a decision. I mean, I'm looking at this baby. I'm her one mother. And I'm remembering the joy and, and the way I could serve, you know, 30 other kids, I was at a loss, meaning both of these things were priorities to me. And what I see happening with a lot of my clients is everything in their life has been placed there by them. They love it all. They are giving of their time in, in um, efforts that are important to them. They have prioritized so much that now these top items, how do you choose between, you know, family and the board meeting of the company you started? So my story quickly is that it took four years of my principal calling me back and the birth of my second daughter for me to realize I can always go back to teaching, but I can never parent these kids at this particular age. And yet choosing to be a stay-at-home mom was really hard because it was a label change. And so because I was a driver and a go-getter and I did everything 150%, I dove in to being a stay-at-home mom 150%. So I volunteered in their classes and then from there became on 
the PTA committees, then I led the PTA in the neighborhood, there would be neighborhood associations. And not only was I on it, but then I became a board member. At church, you can see the pattern. And so I loved what I did and I did it well. And I didn't say no when people asked me because in my mind, I thought, ah, it doesn't take me that long to do. I can probably do it faster, better, more efficiently, or I'm only a stay-at-home mom. They don't have the time, but I do. And so I was getting signs all along the way of these, I don't know, 10, 20 years, but I didn't recognize that it was something I should pay attention to because I was so on autopilot, like day to day doing what I had to do, being there for the kids, being there for my husband. Yeah. Just with, with what you said and kind of to reflect back, well, you mentioned before sharing your story, that piece of uh, setting the bar higher and continuing to want to achieve more. And what sparked you even into that was having to discern between do I continue to teach or do I take on a new role? And then with the new role, understanding that you as an achieving person wanted to continue to set that bar higher and higher and do more and more and more. And then I, obviously to sum it all up, what you said earlier too, uh, it happens slowly but continued to just build on one after the other, after the other, saying yes, taking on so many things. And then it led you to, was there a breaking point or? Yeah. yeah two. Okay. So, so, so two major pivotal things. So my marriage of 20 years crashed and burned. And I learned that I had had a stroke. The marriage burning and crashing around me was super surprising because at the time I would tell you I had a solid relationship. Clearly we didn't, but I thought we did. So I missed the signs of my relationship needing attention. And I had had a stroke. I had missed the signs of high blood pressure, weight gain, chronic stress, not sleeping well, not exercising well. I had the signs, but I missed them. Most people in burnout miss them because they feel they need to keep going at that pace because that bar is being moved and they can never you know get to the end so those were critical moments for me and i recognized that it's something that i'm doing let's figure it out so rather than leading an autopilot life which is what i was doing and most of us do quite frankly we get up we do what we have to do we go to bed we do it again that's autopilot we're being controlled by our days and I decided to control my choices within my day. And that's really what I teach my clients. No matter how busy we are, no matter how chaotic life can be, like this pandemic, super stressful for all of us. And yet the clients I work with have been able to feel this sense of control, dare I say, calm, a sense of fulfillment within that. Yeah, that's powerful. I thank you first and foremost for, for sharing that part of your story. It's, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And you kind of mentioned too, right? You, you recognized along that path, there were points when you were being, your body was telling you that, that things need to change. Things are not going the way that they need to for sustainability. And then the universe, as it does, came around and threw some really big things your way that forced you to change. And what I'm hearing is that you're kind of an expert in helping, especially women, recognize those signs when they come about to make change so that they continue to be sustainable without having to go through those massive kind of rock bottom, pivotal type of moments. Am I hearing that right? Is that kind of, I guess, your you're, specialty? Yeah, yeah. You're completely okay. right. I'm, I'm compelled because of my experience, I don't want other women to mm -hmm. lose relationships that are important, lose health that is desperately important, lose families. So, so I really feel it's my job to share that burnout can absolutely be healed mm -hmm. and we can learn strategies and processes and an internal framework to um, prevent it from happening again. I, you know, I feel our, our, our culture right now is trying to help people with burnout. You know, corporations are giving massages 
at you know the office. Uh, take an extra day off. Here's another vacation day. Here's a webinar on you know healing burnout. They're giving us things to do, and the self care industry is feeding into this. So let me clarify: self care helped heal my burnout, and yet. I'm not a fan of the self-care industry's message. The women who come to me have felt desperately lonely and defeated and feeling guilty that they can't take better care of themselves because they've listened to the self-care. Get massages, get your nails done, go to the gym and you'll feel better. And the fact is they're not feeling better by doing more. What will help them feel better is an internal reframe of basically how we attack our day. I believe burnout is not an external job, it's an internal one. So when we have a framework of, let's say, choosing to respond to our situation, then we have control. Most of us feel completely out of control when we're in burnout. We don't feel like we have a choice. So regaining pieces of control are critical. Yeah, that's big. Regaining that control. And I, I, what I'm hearing too, and I mean, just from a, obviously you're a coach and you understand the coaching perspective is that it needs to, like you said, it needs to come internally and we need to figure out the strategies that are going to help us come out of it from the inside out. What you're saying, especially when it comes to corporations, maybe giving things to do, like, yeah, it feels good in the moment and it's almost like a distraction. Like, yeah, this is great and it feels good and it's fun. And I'm so happy that you know, maybe my company or whoever is supporting me in this way. And unless we take the initiative and the responsibility to do it internally, that's what's going to be sustainable is doing things internally first. And as a good coach, as you are, right, you've, you've been through it, you know what, what the signs to look for are, you know what that breaking point can be. And you help women find those strategies internally, figure out what's going to bring them true calm, right? Because as much as, you know, bubble baths or a glass of wine, like feels good. That's not for everyone. For some people, yeah, it's great. And it helps them yeah. reset, but it's not for everyone. There is no one size fits all. There is no one way fits all when it comes to self-care, when it comes to calming the nervous system, when it comes to de-stressing your lifestyle, you need to figure out those things for yourself. And that's where you come in. Yes, 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 yes. I love how you said that. And it's all individual, isn't it, Michael? Mm -hmm. You know, hundred (laughs) percent. the the self-care industry will tell you do this and you'll feel better. Well, that might work for me. And by the way, bubble baths are on my self-care <laughs> list, right? But for yep. some, it's not, a, you know, it's it's yucky. They, they don't want to do that. So, so I do help my clients first identify where they are in this burnout continuum, right? And then identify what little things that they can either do and or take out of their lives. Sometimes it's not a matter of doing more. As a matter of fact, I'm not a proponent of doing more. I'm a proponent of pruning and and weeding out the distractions, to use your word. We are in a world of distractions. So how do we focus on what we need in the moment? And that is one question that I, I offer to all of my clients, and I'll share that with all of your listeners, is when you are feeling overwhelmed, or when you are not sure what to do next, or you find yourself raiding the pantry because because you want to defer a decision or you want distraction, right? Or you're bored, ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I need right now? Sometimes we can give it to ourselves in the moment and sometimes we can't, but for the brain to recognize that, oh, She's listening to me. I don't have to keep knocking at the door. She knows what I need and she'll take care of it eventually, right? So when I used to raid the pantry, thinking I was preparing snacks for the girls before they came home, while half a box of Girl Scout cookies is gone while I'm, quote, preparing the snacks, right? What I needed at that time wasn't the Girl Scout cookies, although they were tasty and they made me feel good in the moment. What I needed was a nap. I was exhausted by three in the afternoon. And yet my day was just starting because they were hopping off the bus ready to go. And people who work outside of the home 
don't realize that. They're like, oh, how could you be tired at three? You did nothing all day. Well, I, I had been to maybe three board meetings. I had, you know, gone on coffee, networking thing, whatever. I was exhausted by three. I should have taken maybe a 15 minute nap. So what do you need in the moment is a super helpful question to ask. That's powerful. That's I'm going to put that in the show notes too, because that's Mm. such a, it's such a good way to, to, to bring what it is that we're currently experiencing back into our body and reconnect to ourselves, which is such an important part of this process. And then too, I want to retouch on something that you said that is so important. Less is often more. Less is often exactly what we need. I mean, full disclosure, I I challenged myself uh, and I told Dr. Mel and also my my girlfriend, Jess, that one of my challenges going into February is to spend one hour each week just sitting, doing nothing. Can meditate if I want, but literally just sit in a room and just do nothing for one hour, just because that slowing down process is so powerful. Human beings, we weren't made to be go, go, go all the time to get constant stimuli from phones or computers, other people, whatever it may be. So that's just my own challenge. But I just love that you said that because it kind of reaffirmed the idea of just literally sitting in a room for an hour can be sometimes exactly what you need. So, oh, Michael, I'm so glad to hear you're doing that for yourself. (laughs) Yeah, I will be, be interested to know what happens for you, not yeah. only in that hour every week, but as a result of giving your brain some space to integrate and to mm-hmm. create, you know, successful people did not become successful because of going, going, going. They became successful because they had an idea and they can only have an idea with space and margin in that day. Bravo to you. Yeah. High five. Yes. Well, I will keep you updated on that. And speaking yeah. of February too, I wanted to touch in about the retreat that you have coming up. I believe it's a retreat, correct? Or yes. correct me if I'm yes. wrong, but yeah, give us some of the details on that because I mean, if you're listening to this episode and you resonate with what Lisa's sharing, this could be an excellent opportunity for you to come and address your burnout with Lisa. So if you have some information, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd love to share. So What I do with my clients in a nutshell is help them leverage the pause. And so an example for our audience could be knowing that you do not have to answer and respond to somebody immediately. You get to take a couple seconds and pause and then respond. Or you get to say, I need some time to think about that. I'll get back to you at such and such a date. Or pausing can look like the end of the week before rolling in to the next week, you're pausing, you're reflecting back on last week and gaining some perspective before you forge forward and plan ahead. The pause can also look like taking a weekend every quarter or twice a year and slowing things down so that we learn from our mistakes, we gain perspective, And then we move forward. So the pause retreat that I facilitate happens twice a year. The next upcoming one will be February 24th through the 26th. And it's two nights, two and three days in downtown Stillwater at Hotel Crosby. So we will be in the hustling quaint town of uh, Stillwater and we'll be learning how to pause even amid a chaotic, you know, lifestyle. So I'll share my living fully balanced strategy with these women of pause, gain perspective, and then plan ahead. And we'll do it together. I'll share the strategy. I'll share templates. We'll practice slowing things down. So the, so the retreat is very much, I should say it's unlike any other retreat. It is not a retreat full of activities and schedules and meeting people. This is intimate. We will be 10 or less. And I've reserved the presidential suite where we have lots of luxurious space to rest and introspect and connect. So if any one of your listeners is feeling overwhelmed and burdened and once was confident, but now in the innermost quietness of your brain, you're thinking, I am a shell of myself, but you won't say it out loud. The pause retreat may be for you. 
the registration is clearly open. And yet right now there's an early bird rate. January 28th is the end of the early bird rate. The cool. retreat itself is February 24th through the 26th. Thanks for clarifying. Got it. Yeah. So this episode is going live January 26th. Uh, if you do want to jump in for that early bird rate, make sure you get in by Friday. Uh, and the retreat will be February 24th to the 26th. And I mean, Lisa, just from this conversation, I feel more calm and at ease. So I think that could attest to the power that's going to be held mm. uh, in that weekend and, and what's going to be accomplished by, by you and everyone who attends. So I have one more question for you. And I asked this to all of our guests uh, for bet. every podcast. Yeah. And it's pretty straightforward and simple. You know, what is the one thing that you would want to leave our listeners with today? You know, I'd like them to know that exhaustion and overwhelm don't have to be the price of admission into a busy and full life. I really felt like, well, that's how I'm going to have to feel for the next couple of years. And I accepted it. And I want you to know that you do not have to be exhausted and overwhelmed in order to have a successful, full, busy life. Burnout can be healed. And there are simple strategies and they are sustainable and repeatable that can help prevent burnout from happening again. It's, it's, it's a message of hope. Many women and men in burnout feel hopeless and lonely. It's a, it's a dark, lonely place and it doesn't have to be. Yeah. I mean, that kind of reminds me of the quote that we have here in our office. Um, Mm. Those who have health have hope and those who have hope have everything. So um, or maybe it's the opposite way, but that hope piece is key, is key. And then too, yeah, you can always heal, right? With burnout, uh, whatever you're going through, yeah. uh, especially if it's burnout, connect with Lisa. And then lastly, yes, how can our listeners get in touch with you uh, in case they are ready to get some coaching and, and figure out their burnout? Mm, thank you for asking. So living fully balanced is my business. And that's what I work on clients to help them live fully balanced. And on that website, they'll find some freebies to download. There's a self-care checklist. There's also a burnout kickstart, meaning if you really wanna know that you're in burnout, Dr. Christina Mayslax has researched and studied burnout since 1970. So her Mayslax burnout inventory is the gold standard for understanding and identifying burnout. So I am a facilitator of that inventory. So get one of those burnout kickstart sessions. They're $99. You talk with me once, you take the inventory online. We get the the whole report, which is about 35 pages of unique information for yourself. And then we coach again around, now what do we do with this information? And we create personal strategies together. So that burnout kickstart may be something some of your clients might be interested in. Awesome. Yeah. I took, took notes. I always take notes and I'll include the information in the show notes and it's livingfullybalanced.com. Lisa, thank you so much for not only for being on our show, but for really sharing your story and taking the initiative to address such a, a prevalent and honestly growing issue in our culture and our society. And I, like you said, I have hope uh, because of people like you. So thank you so much for taking your time today to be on the Inspire Life podcast. Mm, Thank you very much, Michael. Awesome. Well, take care. And for listeners, as always, until next time, keep inspiring. Thanks, Lisa. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning into the Inspire Life podcast today. Make sure to jump over to livingfullybalanced.com and get your tickets for the pause retreat. Remember that's February 24th to the 26th and early bird pricing ends this Friday, January 28th. So jump on those tickets now if you're ready to sign up. Also, as always, please leave a comment or review wherever you're listening. You can now leave reviews on Spotify. So we would greatly appreciate a five-star review if you do enjoy our podcast and the value that we bring to our audience. And lastly, make sure you jump over to the Inspire Twin Cities community on Facebook. That's where Dr. Mel and I post all of our content and help you continue to live your most inspired and thriving life. And of course, as always, until next time, keep inspiring. Thank you.